children's sermon through, through the uh, message from the choir and now from the Bible. Now faith is uh, being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed as God's, at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Okay. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob. They were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the countless sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things uh, show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I believe look carefully at the Bible, you'll see it doing this, because this is the living, breathing Word of God, and it speaks to you in different ways, depending upon the day and your need. So, it is a living, breathing Word of God. This is our hope. This is what we believe Let's pray. So Lord, in this time of teaching, open our eyes and our ears. Don't be standing out of the way of this teaching, Lord Jesus, as we talk about our faith. In the name of the Lord. Amen. And so the title of my sermon this morning is, Is Your Faith Ready? You know, in the morning, now especially as it cools off, Ramon and I sit on the inside and we have a cup of coffee early in the morning and we look out to the woods behind our house and we watch the squirrels dancing in the trees. Up and down, round and round they go. From limb to limb they leap with confidence that every branch is going to hold them up. And somehow, and seemingly without hesitation, they take a leap of faith from one tree to the other. They have more faith in their acrobatic skills than I have faith that I'll be able to navigate down these steps when I'm done. <laughs> and I've flown on airplanes before. I've had faith that the speed of the air over the wing would lift the plane. Physics tells, it, tells us that it will work each and every time. But every time I'm in the air, I'm nervous. Oh yes, I have faith in physics. What I'm not so certain about is realizing that every part in this airplane that I'm on was manufactured by the lowest bidder. And the problem is the lowest bidder is not on the airplane with me. <laughs> and most of us criticize Peter for his lack of faith, for sinking in the water as he walked toward Jesus. And the story is recorded for us in Matthew. 14. Jesus had just finished feeding the 5,000 with two loaves, or two fishes and five loaves of bread. And then Jesus said, you guys 
get in the boat and you go on back. And in the meantime, I'm going to go up to the mountain and pray with the Father. And during the fourth watch of the night, now that's 6 a.m. to 3 a.m., Jesus saw that a storm had come up and the disciples were out, out in the middle of the lake, probably in trouble. Now I've been in big waves with a small boat before, and I'm here to tell you, you get pretty cotton mouth pretty quickly. So probably the disciples were a little frightened at that moment. One moment the lightning reveals nothing but the black water and the black sky. And the next moment, they see Jesus walking on the water toward them. And then we pick up in Matthew 14, verse 28, and we hear the dialogue between Peter and Jesus. Lord, Peter replied, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. How many of us have done that before? Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. What we all remember from this story is that Peter's faith failed when he sank. And what we forget is this, he's the only one in the boat that got enough courage to get out of the boat and walk on the water. Even if it was for only a few steps. You know, there are people who fail in their faith walk, and after experiencing failure, they just plain quit, and we call them quitters. And there are people who fail in their faith, in their faith walk, and after experiencing failure, get up and walk by faith again. We call them saints. Peter failed several times, and yet today, because he got up and walked again, we call him St. Peter. Throughout the Bible, we meet men and women of faith who at one time or another fail in their walk with the Lord. And so we ask, why are they in the Bible? Well, the answer is they all got up and tried again. Some of us here today might be struggling with our faith walk. And if you are, don't feel like you're the Lone Ranger. From time to time, we all struggle in our faith journey in one way or another. And though there might be days of struggle in our faith walk, the key thing for us to remember is to get up by faith and to be faithful. Each and every time we fall, God will pick us up, brush us on the backside, and say, try again. God told Abraham to leave the land of Ur and go on to Canaan. No map, no GPS, only by faith did Abraham end up in Canaan. Would any of us have faith enough to strike out from a place that we're familiar with and go to a place where we've never been before? Abraham did. He believed and he had faith that God would show him the way. Even as an odd couple, an old couple, God promised Abraham and his wife Sarah a child. Did Abraham doubt God? No. We're told in the Bible, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Faith put Abraham right with God. And so here's the question. How's your faith? Are you right with God? You know, if we had read all of Hebrews 11, which, by the way, like I said before, is known as the faith chapter, we would have met the different patriarchs of our faith, from Abel to Moses to Gideon and Samson, all the way through to King David. And you know what they all have in common? 
25 times in that chapter of Hebrews 11, we're told that by faith they live their lives. And if you read slowly enough, you will even read about yourself in that chapter. In verse 3, all of us are included. It says, by faith we, we know that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Yes, it is by faith that we believe that God spoke the universe into existence. I can't explain it. You can't explain it. Together, by faith, we believe it. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us this about faith in God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek. First, you must have faith that there is God. And after his resurrection, Jesus told Thomas this, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet have believed. Again, the Bible speaks directly to each and every one of us here today. We all fit that last category. Blessed are those who have not seen, but believed. We all believe by what? We believe by faith. Now that I've laid this basic foundation about faith, let's look at the title of the sermon, Is Your Faith Ready? And about now, you should be asking, ready? Ready for what? I'm so glad you asked that question. Here's the answer, and it comes from Luke chapter 12. Jesus says, be dressed ready for service, and keep your lamps burning like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. Now most of us think that the end, about the end of life when we think about the Lord's return. And in Luke 12, 40, it puts a different kind of spin to the story. It's, Jesus says, you must always be ready. Because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect Him. Yes, for sure, none of us know the day of our last breath that we will breathe. But today, for today, let's focus on the time that we all have left. We look at verse 35 from Luke 12, maybe a little differently. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Between this moment and the last moment, we got to ask, are we ready? Is your faith ready to be called into action by the Master? When Jesus calls you into action, are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you equipped? For if your faith is ready for that call, whatever it is, whether it might be witnessing and evangelizing, teaching, using your, your gift of hospitality, your musical talents, whatever the gift, this is what you're going to find out. This is what you're going to discover. And Luke 12, 37 tells us, it will be good for those servants, that's you, whose master finds them watching when he comes. So we ask, well, why is that good? Here's, here is the closing sentence of that verse, as Jesus turns the table on us. I tell you the truth. Jesus will dress himself to serve. And he will have us recline at the table and will come and wait on us. Jesus serves us when we serve him. So is your faith ready? And if it is, when you answer the call to Jesus, when you think you're serving Him, He in fact is serving you. How does Jesus serve us, you might ask? Well, let me count the ways. Oh wait, let's just count one. How about eternal life for one? We'll listen to Hebrews again. It's 
God speaks of Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on the earth. People who say such things so that show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had an opportunity to return. Instead, they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. All of these saints live, left a life behind to seek a new life, a life of God. We as Christians don't look back to what might have been. We look forward to what will be. And it is by faith that we move forward and answer the call that Jesus put to his disciples. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishermen of men. So is your faith ready for the call? On our resurrection day, may Jesus look at each one of us and say, Great is your faithfulness. To God we give glory. Amen. Great is your faithfulness.